Welcome. Thank you so much for joining me in this quick and fun little flowing class. We're going to be exploring balance and in particular how to properly stabilize our body so that we're more confident and more steady in some tricky balances. Remember, above all else, that it's really important that you just have fun, enjoy yourself, and breathe. Just, just to let you know before we get moving that we are going to be facing both directions on our yoga mats, and we're also going to be moving off of our yoga mats a little bit. So if you need to pause the video just to readjust yourself, then do so now. But if you're ready, we'll begin just sitting in a comfortable position where you can breathe fully. As I mentioned, this is the most important thing that you do above all else, even if you need to take a break, just keep breathing. And I want to breathe in a way where you fill your lungs entirely. So place one hand on your belly, maybe the other hand can be on your chest. And as you inhale through your nose, feel that not just your chest, but also your belly is expanding outwards. As you exhale, I want you to do it through pursed lips, like you're blowing on a little candle. So go through a few more rounds of that breath, just feeling the slight changes in your body and your belly as you inhale. And when you exhale out through those pursed lips, feel the gentle engagement of your deep abdominal muscles. Maybe you feel a little hugging and lifting of your pelvic floor muscles as well. So one more time, nice and slow, take your time with it. Allow your lungs to fully expand out through pursed lips, feeling as your lungs become completely empty on that exhale. Good, so we'll carry on with that kind of breathing, but I want you to roll over and come onto all fours now. So a tabletop position with your knees under your hips and your hands underneath your shoulders. And find a nice neutral spine. So sometimes the tendency is to let the belly drop. And so I want you to just lift your belly up, feel a slight engagement of your abdominals, and maybe even take one hand to your belly and carry on with that breath. So inhale, let your belly expand out. As you exhale out through pursed lips, feel that gentle engagement of your abdominals. Now, with one hand on your belly, can you just pull your belly in a little bit more? So feel the skin or your clothing on your belly actually crunch up a little bit smaller with your hand. So your, the front of your ribs get a little bit closer to the front of your hips. And can you hold that shape? So don't let anything move. Let your hand be how you're able to gauge this as you bring your right leg back. So don't let anything spread out here. Keep it all nice and in. Now, if you can, even lift that right leg up off the floor. Again, the tendency is to let everything drop. Use your hand. And at this point, hopefully it's your left hand because we're lifting the right leg up. So use that left hand to just check that everything is staying nice and tight. So you should be feeling now your glutes really working in your right leg. And we need those glutes working for us for tricky balances. If you feel like you've got a steady hold of this position, extend your left arm straight out in front of you. And I want you to push it as far away from you as you can, as if you're trying to get your left shoulder to your left ear. Still holding on to that shape in your torso. And we're going to just lower the right toes to the back of the mat and the left hand all the way to the front of the mat. So we're kind of stretched out. Now, if you've lost any engagement, just keep pressing your hand firmly into the mat. Press your right toes firmly into the mat. Keep your abdominals nice and stable and press your left shoulder to your ear. And see if you can just lift up maybe your left knee, maybe your right hand. Perhaps you even feel confident enough to lift them both up. Lower them back down and 
extend up back to where we began. Just make sure you're not letting the abdominals stretch out. Keep them all in. We'll just do that one more time. So lower the right toes to the back of the mat, low left hand to the front of the mat. Really press, find some stability through the shoulders, the glutes, the core. Maybe lift up the left knee, the right hand, or perhaps even both of them. <laughs> lower them back down and just come back into your tabletop position. Resume that breath, so deep inhale through the belly. Take the right hand to your belly and exhale out through pursed lips. Feel that engagement. Just find it again, just in case you've lost it. Hold on to that, that shape of the torso, that breath as you extend your left leg back. Just keep breathing through those pursed lips. And remember, use the right hand as your guide to keep the torso as it is and lift the left leg up off the mat without letting the torso change shapes. Now extend your right arm forward. Really press your right shoulder up towards your ear and hold on to that stability you're creating through your glutes, those are your booty muscles, your core, and your shoulders. Lower the left toes to the back of the mat, the right hand to the front of the mat. Really press strong through that right shoulder. Press into the left toes. Hold on to the engagement through the core. Maybe lift the right knee. Maybe lift the left hand. Play around with perhaps even lifting them both up. Ooh, lower them back down. Extend up back to where we were. Right arm, left foot, reaching as far away from each other as you can. And then lower them back down one more time. Play around with that tricky balance. Notice that if you let go of any of that engagement, that activation through the shoulders, the glutes, the core, then it becomes a lot harder. So maybe before you picking up an arm or a knee, just check your engagement again. Good. Lower the knee and the hand back down into your tabletop position. And once again, take a deep inhale through the nose. Exhale out through pursed lips. Tuck the toes under behind you if they're not already. Take an inhale. And as you exhale again, press your chest back towards your knees. Let your knees lift up. Really open up through the shoulders. Keep the knees nice and bent. And I want you to keep pressing firmly through your hands, pressing your shoulders up towards your ears as you find the stability through your shoulders. So imagine you want to get your armpits to face each other. So you get this external rotation through the shoulders. Keep the nice, gentle activation of the core. As you slowly, maybe pedaling the feet, start to straighten your knees. Don't worry about making them completely straight. Just kind of go in that direction, just wherever you're feeling works for you today. Now hold on to that nice, stable shape of the shoulders and your abdominals. And just like we did in our tabletop position, lift your right leg up. Hold on to the shape of your torso, not letting any kind of back bending happen. So really hugging in that nice strong core. Step your right foot just in front of the left and the same thing, lift the left leg up. We're going to slowly walk to the front of the mat, really holding on to this engagement, feeling the stability through our body as we just gently hold on to these muscles. Now, once your feet are at the front of the mat, you can have the knees bent, have your hands up off the floor just to make it, this forward fold feel comfortable for you. But I want you to pay attention now to your feet. Can you lift up all 10 toes and place the balls of the feet down on the mat, spread your toes as wide as you can, and then lower them back down, nice and spread wide. And then Press your toes into the mat so you feel this activation through the feet. Lift up through the inner arches. And notice that this activation of the feet maybe even sends a chain of uh, activation all the way up your legs. Now, can you squeeze your glutes to rise all the way up to stand? Keep your glutes nice and active again. And if you feel like you need a little bit more stability through the core, remember that breathing out through pursed lips 
helps activate those deep core muscles. So holding on to that, I want you to just take a little step forward with the left foot, just like you're walking down the street. So heel toe, but let the left foot land back on the mat with that activation and stability, lifting up through the inner arches, pressing down through the toes and the balls of the feet, and slowly guide your right knee as high up towards your chest as you can, but without losing a neutral spine and without losing that left knee. So it's not about compensating in your body just to get the right knee as high as you can, but rather really using that left glute to stabilize your left hip, as your right knee comes up. So I really like to sometimes reach back and just poke my glutes sometimes, just make sure that they are working. So left knee is still straight. And if you wobble, remember, full oh, core, lift it through the pelvic floor. Now, if you're confident here, if you're happy here, um, you can have your arms out wide or on your hips, or if you want to challenge yourself, you can have them up overhead. This makes the balance a little bit more challenging. We're just going to take that right knee out to the side now, like we're going towards a tree pose, and take it back to center. Just play around with moving slightly, changing your center of gravity with this right leg, and holding onto this balance as much as possible. Notice if you do start to wobble, maybe that left foot is not pressing down, or maybe you've lost some activation through the core, just pay attention. If this is easy, you could even just take it up a notch in terms of speed. Can you take the right knee out to the side and back forwards a little bit faster and still hold on to your balance? All right, that left leg's probably burning. We're gonna just do one more thing here. Can you just, with the right knee out to the side, bend that left knee and straighten it back up. Make sure it doesn't kind of fall inwards, but drive it out. Okay, and straighten it back up. Last time, bend it, straighten it back up. If you feel confident there, we're gonna bend it. With it bent, lean your torso forward to counterbalance the weight of your right leg, extending back behind you, and slowly lower your right foot all the way to the back of the mat in a warrior three. Lift up to the inner arches of the feet and just gently pull the feet towards each other so you activate through all of those leg muscles. Extend your arms out wide. Take an inhale. Exhale out through pursed lips. Squeeze your glutes. Feel that activation. All of these stability muscles are going to help this balance feel a lot less challenging. Look down at your right foot. What we're going to do is hop off of the left into a little tree pose on the right. Now, if you didn't quite get that, if you wobbled or fell over, let's try it again. Back from your warrior two, just hop it back kind of like into a half-hearted little tree pose on your right leg. Now, same thing as before. Take that left knee out to the side. Really straighten up through that right knee. Lift yourself up out of your right hip. Bend into the right knee. Just like we did on the other side, extend your torso forward. Extend your left leg back behind you. We're going to step it off the mat. So a warrior two, half on the mat, half off the mat. And this might just be a little bit challenging because, of course, we love our yoga mats for making things nice and non-slip for us. And we're going to have to do it a little bit without the help of our yoga mat. So same thing again. Just look at your left foot just so your brain understands where you're going. And when you're ready, take a hop off of your right knee into your left leg. So we're completely off the mat now. Bring your right knee back up to your chest, just where we started. Reach your arms up overhead if they're not already. Lower your right foot down just next to the left. Squeeze your glutes. Keep your, your shoulders right up by your ears. Fold forward. Bend your knees if you need to. And walk your hands forward to come into a downward facing dog. Now, it's not the easiest thing doing a downward facing dog, not on your yoga mat. Don't worry, we'll be moving back over onto our yoga mat. So press your shoulders up towards the ears. Find that engagement of the abdominal muscles. Try not to let your ribs flare out as you lift your right leg up. Now, this may be enough for you, but if you wanna take your balance challenge a notch higher, can you just shift your weight into your right hand and maybe just draw your left fingers underneath your left shoulder, just a little kickstand here. If you feel stable here, you can play around with taking your left arm 
and bring it down by your side like you're standing up, but keep pressing firmly through that right shoulder and keep your rib cage in. Don't let that flare out. This is gonna help you balance here. Now, next challenge. Can you slowly take your right leg all the way over towards the right side of you, let the left arm come out to the left side, Lower your right foot down, lower your left hand down. So you're kind of like in a diamond with your, <laughs> with your hands and feet. Or you just come up onto the tiptoes and swivel around towards the left. So we're still in a kind of diamond shape. And I know that uh, you've got a nice view of my butt right now. So make sure and enjoy that. But can you now pick your left foot up and take it back and up behind you in a little three-legged down dog. And again, maybe you play around with coming onto the tiptoes or the fingertips of the right hand. And maybe even slide that right hand next to your body. Good. Lower your left foot and your right hand back down into a downward facing dog and play around so your feet are kind of maybe back on your mat, your hands are off. Play around, can you come back to where we were with the right leg lifted and the left arm lifted? Can you do them both at the same time? So we're gonna do the same move. Maybe you're using your left hand as a little kickstand, that's cool too. But either way, we're gonna take the right leg over to the right side, the left arm to the left, lower both down, so we're back in kind of a diamond shape. Again, tip toes of the feet to swivel around to the left. And again, pick your left foot up, your right hand up, Maybe play around one more time with that tricky two-legged downward facing dog and lower both hands and feet back onto the floor. So we're just to the side of our yoga mat. Come up onto your tiptoes with the ankles together. Bend your knees and press your knees over to the left side. If you're just getting a nice little twist, come back through center and do the same to the right. So press your knees to the right, your hips to the left. From here though, we're gonna sit our butts down, all the way back down onto our yoga mat. And I want you to just twist from this sitting position all the way around to the right. And can you place your right hand down back behind you? Lift your hips up, swivel on your tiptoes to lower your left hand back down and come back into a downward facing dog. So now we're facing the other side of our yoga mat. And if you feel like, if you're like, oh, if you're like me, you realize you've lost the stability, your rib cage is flaring out, your shoulders are dumping, just press back into that stable position that we established at the beginning and hold on to that. We're gonna lift the left leg up walk it forward, right leg up, walk it forward, just like we did at the beginning, just taking these big steps all the way to the front of our yoga mat or towards the front of our yoga mat. While we're here in this forward fold, you can have your knees bent. Don't worry if your hamstrings don't allow to do exactly what I'm doing, but I want you to just pay attention to your feet, lift up through the inner arches, pick the toes up. You can even use your hands if you need a little bit of help. Sometimes our toes don't really do what our brains tell them to do. Um, and it just takes some practice. So you can use your hands to tell them what to do as well. But make sure the balls of the feet are down as you spread your toes nice and wide and then lower them back down onto your mat. Inner arch is lifted. Really press down through the toes, the balls of the feet. Feel that activation that starts in the feet and travels all the way up the legs. Now squeeze your glutes. I know it feels weird to squeeze your glutes in a forward fold, but you can do it. And use that activation to rise back up. Keep the glutes nice and active all the way to the top. Maybe reach back there and give them a poke and be like, good job glutes, thanks for coming to the party. All right, so same thing we did before. We're gonna take a walk, just like we're walking down the street, heel toe with the right foot this time. And plant that right foot down with the same integrity that we just had before. Toes spread nice and wide, lifting up through the inner arches, glutes active as you draw the left knee up towards your chest. So make sure that right knee stays straight. You're not letting your pelvis droop backwards or anything like this. Everything stays nice and stable through the core. Arms can be where you feel most comfortable. We're just going to play around with that left knee now. So take it out to the left side of you and pull it back forward. Words. Maybe you need to do this really slowly. Maybe you can play around with doing it more quickly. 
So a few of those, just keep those glutes nice and active and pay attention to anything that's happening that's switching off your stability muscles like your rib cage flaring out or kind of dumping one side into your hip. Just keep pulling everything towards you, towards your midline. Good. With the left knee out to the side now, same as before, we're just going to do three little squats on that right knee. So even if you just bend a tiny little bit, if that's all you can muster, then that's great. Just going as low as you feel you can do so with integrity in that right knee, not letting it fall inwards, but keeping it driving out. Good. Last time, with the right knee bent, reach your torso forward as you extend your left leg all the way back behind you. Slowly lower it to the back of the mat, coming into a warrior two. Again, just make sure your glutes are still active, your rib cage is in. <sighs> Breathe out through pressed lips if you need a little bit of help to activate your core. Lift up to the inner arches and squeeze your feet together. You don't have to squeeze all of these muscles like 100%, but just feeling like a 10 or 15% engagement is going to help you with these tricky balances to come. So I always like to look at the direction I'm going in. Helps my brain understand what's coming. So look at your left foot. Just tell your brain, okay, we're moving over there. Take a hop off of your right foot. Come into your tree pose here on your right leg. If you're like, if you didn't get it, you're wobbling, you want to try it again, go for it. Try it again, establishing that stability all the way through the core, the glutes, the feet, until you feel like, ah, oh, okay, I'm getting it. Feeling a little bit more of that balance and coordination. And you can always come back to this class and do it a few times. So we're going to bend into that left knee. Remember, don't let it fall inwards. Drive it out. Extend your torso forwards. Right leg goes back behind you and lower down into your warrior two on the left leg, half off the mat. So from your warrior two here, just same as before, take a little hop off of the left knee, activate, stabilize, and come into a little tree pose on your right leg. Bring the left knee back to the front. Pull it up as high towards your chest as you can, keeping that right leg straight. Just feeling that right glute working one minute longer and lower your left foot down. Press your shoulders up towards your ears. Fold forward, keeping this activation. Walk your hands forward into a downward facing dog. Really press your fingertips, your hands into the mat, press your shoulders up towards your ears, draw your ribs in, and hold on to all of this stability with your armpits turning to face each other as you lift your left leg up this time. Come up onto the fingertips of the right hand. Maybe you can play around with bringing the hand underneath your shoulder, maybe even start to lift it up. Just keep holding on to that core stability, the shoulder stability. Maybe you wobble like I just did. It's all good. We're going to extend the left leg over to the left side and the right arm over to the right side and lower them down so we're in a little diamond again. Tip toes to swivel around towards the right. And can you Pick that right leg up and bring it back behind you into your downward facing dog. The left hand can stay where it is or maybe comes down by your side. And see if you can just find some stability, some balance there. Lower the right foot and the left hand down. And maybe you can come back into your two-legged downward facing dog. Both hand and leg coming up at the same time. Good. Same as before. Take the left leg out to the side, the right arm out to the side. Lower them down in a little diamond shape. Tip toes on the feet to swivel around. Over to the right one more time. Pick the right leg up. Bring it back behind you, maybe the left arm, and you play around one more time in this tricky balance. Then lower your right foot and your right hand back down into a downward facing dog just to the side of your yoga mat. And same as before, take your ankles together, come up onto the tiptoes, bend your knees and press your knees over to the right side and your hips come to the left, a little twist here, and swivel around, go into the other direction, so knees to the left, hips to the right, and we're just going to sit all the way down on our butt, coming back onto our yoga mats, I'm always happy when I get back on my yoga mat, spin around to the left, lift your butt up so you can keep spinning, lower your 
right hand down next to the left and come all the way back into your downward facing dog. One last nice strong downward facing dog. Press your shoulders towards your ears, really open up through the shoulders, keep the ribs in though. Walk your feet forward, bend your knees, come into a little squat and we'll just walk your hands back behind you to lower yourself back onto your butt. Extend your legs straight out in front of you and roll yourself down onto your back. From here, so just take a couple of little twists to recalibrate, maybe one knee to the chest. Maybe you like to take both knees to your chest and just take the knees over to either side. I always like to finish my practice, however short the practice is, with a couple of little twists. And whenever you're ready, just making any movements that you feel you need, let's take a moment to just lie with the feet extended out to the edges of the mat and our arms down by our side with the palms facing up and maybe even close the eyes. Just to take a moment here to rest and let our body come back to neutral. Let our muscles relax. Let our mind quiet and focus for just this last moment of this class on your breath. It's easy to want to skip this part. Sometimes this is the hardest part of a class, even a class with downward facing dogs only using two arms or only using two limbs. But rest is most definitely an, a very important ingredient to overall physical and mental balance, which is, of course, the theme of this class. So make sure to balance your activity with rest. And I invite you to stay there in your resting position for as long as you would like, as long as you feel you can take the time to do that. Please don't rush out of it. Make sure and take that feeling of calm into the rest of your day. And I will leave you for now. So thank you so much for joining me.